Hey guys, and welcome to Life with Aprons. I am walking in our field right now because today we are taking a cow that we have raised for two years to the butcher. Hey guys. So this one over here is Josie and she is our milk cow. She's actually pregnant right now. And then we also have, here is Lix, which our kids named. This is the steer that is headed out today. He's pretty stubborn and ornery. He'll butt you. Um, he's tried to go at the kids. And so we're not, you know, too sad about him leaving. Although he is a pretty cow, but um, it's made it challenging for us to get in there with the milk cows because he gets pretty territorial. I don't know if you can see in the very back, there's one more cow back there. That's Jolene. She's our other milk cow and she is also pregnant. for about two years and a couple weeks ago it was finally time to take the steer to the processor. Now normally we process our own meat here at home but when it comes to a cow it's a little different. What makes a cow different than say a pig, a chicken, a duck, all those other animals? The main thing is if you want tender beef and you spent two years yeah. growing at this animal, you want it to be tender. You don't want to be tough and have everything turn into hamburger. I don't like to work for my food by chewing hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a whole cow worth of hamburger. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have one, that's fine. But in order to make sure that it's tender, especially your steaks and your roast, you need to be able to hang it and let it age in the cooler for about two weeks, 14 mm -hmm. days. We don't have anywhere yeah. to hang a, once you've, and we'll go over this in a second, but we don't have anywhere to hang a 532 pound carcass to age for 14 days. Right. And we don't have steady, we're here in North Carolina in the wintertime. We just don't have steady temperatures enough to hang it for two weeks. So no. it just wasn't a possibility for us. Yeah. So onto the processor he went and two weeks later we got our cow back so we're going to go over today some of the numbers and kind of give you an idea of what it took for us cost wise to grow a cow for two years and then how much meat we got back so let's just dive into those numbers right now all right so like amanda was saying one steer mm -hmm. Um, a steer is a boy cow that hasn't um, been allowed to keep all of his parts to breed. He's been castrated. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I also make sure we cover the bases. So yes. People might not know. A steer has what been castrated. A bull has not. Yeah. Nothing to do with horns. <laughs> Actually, our our milk cow, she's a female. She has horns, and others don't. So don't make that mistake. We got our calves from a local farmer. Mm -hmm. Just had just been weaned, so roughly sixteen to twenty week period. And our started off pretty small. Say we'll say a hundred pounds or less. In two years time, mm -hmm. just on grass, mm -hmm. just on pasture, what we have out here, hay in the winter time, which is also from what we have out here. A little bit of alfalfa, say once a week, you can buy either the cubes or the pellets from your local uh, feed supply store. Some mineral. We raised that, say, 100 pound calf in two years to approximately 1,100 pounds. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say that you have to give cows grain. Mm. You don't. This is a good point. Mm -hmm. If you care about the nutritional aspect of what you're eating, mm -hmm. you don't want to give your herbivores right. cows, sheep, goats. If you're going to eat those guys, you don't really want them to have grain. Grain changes their, um, the makeup of their other, other muscle and fat, and it has some very negative effects. Yeah. Ours, purely grass. Yeah. So it is possible to, to grow one out on pasture from start to finish in a two year period mm -hmm. and still get a good result. Now, I want to make a side note. If you haven't seen our videos on moving our cows, we also practice rotational grazing which means we are moving our cows every couple of days to a new paddock of grass. So although we have a smaller pasture, we are able to move them from paddock to paddock. When you let them have free reign of the entire pasture, I mean, what does that do for the cows? You know, cows are kind of like kids. They're going to eat what they want to. Mm -hmm. And if you're not forcing them into a certain area, then they're going to keep on eating the same plants that are more palatable for them. They're going mm -hmm. to choose the ice cream, so to speak, every time. Mm -hmm. And so if you let them have free reign over your whole pasture, they're going to pick and choose what they eat. Mm -hmm. And they're going to keep hitting those same favorite plants, those yes. same favorite grasses, clover especially, they'll be hitting them over and over and over before the plant has had time to fully recover yeah. from that last mm -hmm. grazing. So what you're doing, it's easy, it's easy to let them just be out yeah. in one big pasture, but you're degrading the quality of your pasture. Right. Um, two years, we had a 1,100 pound steer, basically, once they processed it to hanging weight, that means they're taking the hide off, they're taking the head off, and they're taking all the um, the insides out. Then we were at 532 pounds for our steer. Now this was a dairy breed. This wasn't a beef right. breed. Mm -hmm. So 532 pounds for a half Jersey, half Guernsey is pretty good actually. Um, mm -hmm. Some beef varieties of cows might do a little better, but we ended up with a meat yield. Now this is not counting the organs or bones. This is just meat, steaks, roast, hamburger, um, right at 300 pounds. So that gives you a roughly an idea of what to expect. Um, and if, like I say, if you have a good beef variety, Angus, other varieties that are specifically bred to have um, a great yield, you might end up more. No. All right, let's dive into the expenses for the steer. 
we bought our calf locally from a farmer. Two hundred dollars is what we paid for him. Your price will vary. That's a pretty good deal. I'm just gonna be. That's a pretty good deal. We gave alfalfa mm -hmm. roughly once a week. We gave mineral at the same time. Yep, mineral. So, if you add the price of the calf, the price of the alfalfa over two years, the price of the mineral over two years, and then our local processor charges ninety dollars to mm -hmm. uh, to slaughter the animal mm -hmm. below a six hundred pound hanging weight. And then it's a dollar fifteen for us locally mm -hmm. per pound of hanging weight to process it into your roast, your steaks, your hamburger, whatever you want. So for our animal at five hundred and thirty two pounds of, of the hanging weight, that was six hundred and eleven dollars and eighty cents. Add all that together, divide it by our meat yield of three hundred pounds. And we ended up with a cost of four dollars and seventy seven cents a pound for any cut of meat. Any cut of meat. Mm -hmm. Grass fed from start to finish. Mm -hmm. As organic as it gets. The best meat that you can find for four dollars and seventy seven cents a pound. Now if you've seen our pig video, we also go into numbers there, and those numbers are also staggering as to the cost per pound when you're raising your own pig. It's the same with the cow. It's pretty amazing. I mean, we're talking steaks at $4.77 a pound. Now, we haven't talked about startup costs. There's going to be startup cost involved, but you're not paying that cost every time. And I, I would also encourage you, even if you're not in a position to raise your own animals, yeah. if you can find a local farmer, mm -hmm. especially one that is doing grass-fed, grass-finished for your beef or for your lamb, most of them will only tack on 4 to $6 a pound more and that's that's for any cut mm -hmm. so say if they added four dollars a pound to re compensate them for their expense mm -hmm. you're still looking at under nine dollars a pound if you go to the grocery store in our area and you're just getting ground beef that is grass-fed mm -hmm. um, sometimes not grass finished you're paying at least eight dollars a pound just for ground beef that's that's pretty amazing still for the price plus you're supporting a local farmer if you can find a local farmer that will sell you mm -hmm. the whole animal or you can do a half if you have something else to go in with or even a quarter if you have some others get you get you a good size freezer put it in the house and at that, mm -hmm. at that kind of, you know, less than $9, depending mm -hmm. on what they're charging, way more economical than if you were to go to the store yeah. and buy it piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, the bonus is you can ask for all of the bones. You can ask for all of the organs. You can ask for all of the fat. I have a video on how to turn beef fat into tallow. You get all of these extras that aren't even counted into the cost just because you've bought a half a cow or a whole cow. Um, so you get to do the bone broth or you can use the bones for your dogs or the organs for your dogs or if you like organ meat you can cook that up as well. You have all these extras that you don't get from the grocery store. One of the things that we are always stressing is to know where your food comes from. That includes our meat, not just our garden, our vegetable gardens, 
but we need to know what is going into our meat. And we know exactly what's going into our meat. We don't use any hormones. We don't use any antibiotics, no dewormer. We don't need any of that stuff because we raise them in a healthy way, in a responsible way. And so that way we can avoid all of this other stuff. Buying your meat from the store, you don't always know what is going into that meat. But you could go to your, you know, if you can't raise your own meat, you can go to your local farmer. Talk with him. Ask him questions. You could probably go to his farm and see the cows for yourself. That gives you a connection to your food and a connection to your local farmer. So shop local mm -hmm. or raise your own food, but take control of your food and know what's going into your food. We will do a follow-up video on what exactly are they putting into our food that's coming soon. But for now, I hope this video has encouraged you that it is possible to know where your food comes from, whether that means raising it yourself, I hope by the numbers you can see that it is economical, or whether it's going to your local farmer and ordering the meat from him. Either way, it's time for us to take control of our own food. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe because we don't want you to miss any more great content. Bye.